problem one. The columns in problem one are linearly independent. That's because for two columns to be linearly dependent, one must be a multiple of the other. And between these two columns, neither one is a multiple of the other. Therefore, these columns are linearly independent, and therefore the null space is the trivial space consisting of the zero vector alone. Problem two. The columns in problem two are linearly dependent because they equal each other. Therefore, column one minus column two is the zero column, and the corresponding element in the null space is one, negative one. Problem three. The columns in problem three are linearly dependent because the second column is the zero column. It is linearly dependent all by itself, and the corresponding null space vector is zero, one. Problem four. Problem four is actually not any different from problem three because it also has the zero column for the second column, and the first column is not the zero column, and it doesn't matter that it's different from the first column in problem three. The null space is the same and is represented by the vector zero, one. Problem five. Now, in problem five, both columns are zero. Therefore, there are two corresponding elements in the null space. And the first one reflects the fact that the first column is zero, while the second reflects the fact that the second column is zero. So actually, the null space in this problem is the entire space R2. So it is best captured by this very compact symbol. So when the matrix is the zero matrix, the corresponding null space is the entire space. The converse is also true. When the null space is the entire space, it necessarily implies that the matrix is the zero matrix. Problem six. In problem six, the first column is the zero column. It is therefore linearly dependent all by itself, and the vector that reflects it is one zero. Problem seven. In problem seven, the two columns are clearly linearly independent. Therefore, the null space is the trivial space consisting of the zero vector alone. And just a brief reminder that we put curly brackets around our vector because the null space is a set of vectors. So if we were to write something like this, it would mean that the null space is a vector which is formally not quite true. So what it is in this case is that the null space is a set of vectors. It's just that it's a set consisting of a single vector, the zero vector. The columns in problem eight are the same as in problem seven. It's just that they come in the opposite order, but they're nevertheless linearly independent, and the null space is once again the trivial null space. All right, let's move on to three by three matrices. In problem nine, we have our familiar dial pad matrix in which the middle column is the average of the other two. And this can be captured by the vector one half, negative one, one half, which means that half of the first column plus half of the third column equals the second column. If you prefer integers, we can capture the same null space with a vector one, negative two, one. And even though these two expressions are different, it's perfectly all right to put an equal sign between them because we must remember what these expressions represent. And what these expressions represent is set of vectors that correspond to all possible values of alpha. And then of course this expression represents the exact same set of vectors as this expression. Therefore the two sets of vectors are equal and the equal sign between these two expressions is justified. Moving on to problem 10. In problem 10 we have a matrix that's a flip of the matrix in problem nine. I took the rows of problem nine and made them columns in problem 10. The linear algebra term for this sort of thing is the transpose. This matrix is the transpose of this matrix. So this matrix is different, but we still see, and that's a coincidence in this case, of course, that the middle column is the average of the other two. Therefore, the null space in this problem is the same as the null space in the previous problem. And of course, that is a complete coincidence. A matrix and its transpose usually have different dimensions and therefore have null spaces that even live in different spaces and therefore cannot usually be compared. But in this case, 
not only did they both live in R3, they're actually equal, but that's totally by coincidence. Problem 11. In problem 11, the columns are linearly dependent because they're all equal to each other. So that will actually give us two independent relationships among these columns. For instance, the first relationship could be that the first column equals the second column. And another relationship could be that the first column equals the third column, which can be captured by the elements in the null space 1, negative 1, 0, and 1, 0, negative 1. Alternatively, you could have said that, well, I'm also seeing that column 2 equals column 3, which would correspond to an element in the null space 0, 1, negative 1. But as we discussed before, and I invite you to review that discussion, this is really one too many, because this vector is already captured in this expression, for instance, by taking alpha equals minus 1 and beta equals 1, then this expression will yield this vector, so it's already in the mix. Also, if you think about information, then knowing that first column equals second, and also knowing that first column equals third, implies that second equals third. So that's not a new observation. That's not a new relationship. It's already known, and therefore this vector is already in the mix, and we should not include it independently in the null space. Of course, what we could have done is included this vector and skip this one, or include the last two, but skip this one. In other words, we could include any two linearly independent vectors from the null space and use those as our basis for the null space. But I think the first two that we chose originally are, in some sense, the best. Problem 12. The matrix in problem 12 is once again the transpose of the matrix in problem 11. But the relationships among the columns are now different. The first relationship is that the second column is twice the first column. And the second relationship is that the third column is three times the first column. Therefore, the corresponding elements in the null space are 2, negative 1, 0, and 3, 0, negative 1. Problem 13. In problem 13, the first two columns are the same, and the corresponding element in the null space is 1, negative 1, 0, and the third column is twice the first column. Therefore, the corresponding element in the null space is 2, 0, negative 1. Problem 14. In problem 14, the first two columns are the same. They're actually the same as in problem 13, so we can just copy this element of the null space. And the second relationship comes from the fact that the third column is a column of all zeros, which means that the corresponding element in the null space is 0, 0, 1. In fact, whenever you see the 0 column, there's a corresponding element in the null space that consists of all zeros and a 1 in the same position as the 0 column. Problem 15. In this problem, all of the columns are the same. We're already familiar with this situation, and we know that the null space is 1, negative 1, 0, and 1, 0, negative 1. Problem 16. In problem 16, the first two columns are equal, which means that we can copy the corresponding element from the null space from problem 15. And the last column consists of all zeros. It is the zero column. Therefore, the corresponding element of the null space is 0, 0, 1. Problem 17. Problem 17 has two zero columns, first and third. So there will be two corresponding elements in the null space, and the first one is 1, 0, 0, while the second one is 0, 0, 1. And it would be incorrect to only include one element in the null space, which equals 1, 0, 1. That shortchanges this null space. This null space is two-dimensional. In problem 18, the situation is very similar except the first two columns are the zero columns. Therefore, the null space consists of 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0.
problem 19. Now problem 19 is the zero matrix. So its null space can be first captured like this, but then as we saw before, there is a much more efficient way of capturing it, which is simply to use this symbol. The null space is the entire space R3. And once again, the converse is true. If the null space is the entire space, then the matrix is necessarily the zero matrix. Problem 20. In problem 20, the columns are clearly linearly independent, which means that the null space is the trivial space consisting of the zero vector alone. Problem 21. In problem 21, the first two columns are equal, which yields 1, negative 1, 0 as the element in the null space. And in fact, it's the only available relationship among the columns of this matrix. Therefore, this expression captures the entire null space in problem 21.